What's up, everybody? Welcome back. This is Forgo. And today we have a few things to talk about. We got this developer note and we have sneak peek one, which is very exciting for some of us. I know some people might be a little disappointed in it, but we'll get to talking about that. And I'm just going to kind of briefly go over this dev note. Uh, all of you have probably already seen other videos by other content creators uh, talking about this, giving their opinions. I've definitely seen some opposing opinions about this. Uh, I'm kind of reserved about the developer note because we don't know exactly what all entails in the next update. And and the dev notes are just vague. There's a lot of vague things in here. They're not really telling us everything. So it's hard to say what exactly is going to happen in this next update. So I kind of remain reserved. But I'll give you my opinions on this as we go through it. And then, of course, we, you know, we got the greetings agents. They're going to have the addition of alliance conquest and timeline battle in top league well it only took a year but okay thankfully maybe they're going to make some changes to timeline maybe they're going to make some changes to alliance conquest we've got top league going on so this sounds okay however when i first looked at this the first thing i thought was okay timeline you can actually play so i'm, I'm pretty cool with that but alliance conquest is a auto game mode it's an auto game mode that requires you to play <laughs> a hell of a lot of time every single day and the rewards are shite uh it's really just not worth playing it i haven't played it in years literally i used to play it all the time uh, the other thing about it was the time frames that would be available you know be work you know some of us you know we have jobs we have families uh we just don't have the we just can't play it at the times that it's available so that kind of hurt as well we're going to read a little bit more, you know, uh, since our agents have consistently requested improvements in these pieces of content, we've discussed and prepared a response to hopefully meet all of our agents' expectations, even if this means that it will take some time. Okay, well, you know, again, better late than never. You know, if it's going to be improved and it's going to be better and it's going to be worth playing, that's going to be the key thing, worth playing, then it's all good. And it says, please check below for the improvements that will, made, that will be made in response to the previously mentioned issues. So Timeline Battle Challenger League. Only the top agents in Vibranium League can participate. So right there, they're alienating the normal player base. All the players that are in the top uh, league of Vibranium, they're the ones that are going to be able to participate this and the other players can't. I already don't really care for this. Uh, I think this kind of sucks uh, because it's just catering to a certain group of people. I know some people think that's a good thing. And in a way it is, but in a way it's just not. You know, every update, they should be trying to find balance for all of the players. But let's read a little bit more. Agents can be supported by other agents through the cheer system, which we already have in Alliance Tournament. And advanced glory tokens, which will be the final reward, can be exchanged for highly sought after materials. Now, this could be really great. However, with Net Marble and with Marble Future Fight... They really have always slacked in rewards. It really wasn't until Null that we actually got decent rewards. And even then, I never thought it was good enough. Like, as far as Null, yes. But they still should improve the re rewards in the other world bosses. I've mentioned this multiple times in other videos. And in this advanced, this, hopefully we can use this advanced glory token to get tier 3 materials or awakened materials. Really, we don't need awakened materials. We're getting plenty from squad battle. But tier 3 materials. That's what we really need. TCP, Essence of Dimension, CCF. That's what we really need. So if the glory token doesn't really give you that good rewards, then it's going to be shite. And then we have the Challenger League, which will be added as the new top league. So a new uh, league and timeline, which I have no problem with the new league, as long as other players are still going to be getting rewards. The other thing I worry about is now that there's going to be a new league, are the crystals that we can get from Vibranium going to be moved up to the new Challenger League? Because if that's the case, that would suck. They should still keep the least. Really, they should improve the amount of crystals in Vibranium. And then maybe offer more in Challenger. Because, you know, if you're a veteran, you've been playing this game for a long time, you do deserve more crystals. But I really think they should just improve crystals all the way down to the bottom. You know, just for participating, they should get crystals. Especially in this day and age in Marvel Future Fight. I mean, they like to take away our crystals for the uniform bonuses. And they like to increase the crystal cost of uniforms. But they really didn't want to give us more daily crystals. Which is shite again. The Challenger League will proceed similarly to the established battle procedure. But as this is a stage for battles between powerful heroes, we will do our best to prepare unique strategy factors and adequate rewards. Well, let's hope so. This is the key word, adequate. I think, you know, and this is an opinion-based word, isn't it? 
you know, because their idea of adequate usually is inadequate to us. <laughs> we usually think, no, nope, no, nope, no, nope. no, nope, don't want to really play this game mode because you guys just aren't giving us enough rewards. And then we got the cheer and buff effect added. So since only some of the top agents can participate in the new league, the cheer system has been prepared in order to create an audience like atmosphere, which is, which means that we can watch it. Yay. Yay. We can watch it, which personally guys, I don't care about. I don't like game modes where it's autoplay, at least in timeline, you can actually play it. Uh, autoplay just for me, it's just a big turnoff. I don't care for it. I don't like relying on RNG. You put all of your investment into a character, all those resources, time and everything and for what you to lose due to some bullcrap rng i hate it and if it's still going to be the same thing then probably won't even play it to be perfectly honest with you guys but some people might like this and they might enjoy it agents who are not participating in the challenger league can choose which agent in the challenger league they want to cheer for okay fine and then battle support fund will be given to agents based on the amount of cheer they receive so this means you know uh, whoever can win a popularity contest is probably going to be coming out on top, uh, which I don't really care for. Uh, that really sucks, you know. So maybe if you're a content creator or you're really popular, or maybe it really would be kind of cool if it was an underdog story where someone was the underdog and they came out on top because of this. That would be actually pretty funny. But it might work out the other way where it's just, again, just a popularity contest between content creators, you know, players that everybody knows. And yeah, I don't really, I'm not really too sure how I feel about this. I don't think it's a good thing to be perfectly honest, because again, I think it's just going to be an unfair advantage to a player that already has a lot of advantages to begin with, but we'll see. And, you know, we made a lot of preparations for the buzz so that we can be a new strategy variable. Okay. On top of our agents, amazing controls. Then we have the vengeance system. So if other agents attack your team and prevail, so if they Fight your team and they win, your score will decrease in the Challenger League. Okay. The de deducted points can be restored if you win a battle by using the Vengeance system. So if you lose a fight, you can actually restore your points by using the Vengeance system. We'll see. Again, guys, these dev, this dev note is very vague. There's a lot of things they're not telling us, so I'm not really sure how to feel about it. I really am not. All I know is what the game load game modes are like now, and that's kind of what I'm basing this on. Then we have the advanced glory token and reward improvement. Ah, reward improvement. We'll see. We'll see. Advanced glory tokens will be distributed to the challenger participants depending on their league results, which is fair. That's fine. And to non-challenger participants depending on their cheer counts and results of the agents they cheered for. So people that are cheering can also get the glory tokens. Okay, that's good if the glory tokens offer good rewards. The tokens can be exchanged for higher growth materials in the shop. Also, the participation rewards for each leak are planned to be improved. All right. And then they say other improvements such as acquisition of additional points for victory while using bonus requirement heroes. Addition of the penetration effect to the buffs that are applied to the heroes not frequently used in timeline. And more are also being prepared. Currently right now, you know, we have the buff system in timeline, but really we're still using the same old characters. It's the same old, same old because the buffs just aren't good enough. Now they're going to want to add penetration. We'll see. Honestly, if it isn't enough of a buff, then all those other characters that we want to shine, they're still not going to shine. The OP characters in PvP are still going to be OP characters, so this system will still be shite. We'll see. I don't really think this penetration is going to make that much of a difference unless they make some significant changes to those buffs overall for those characters. They say it's you know also being prepared. We'll see. Alliance Conquest Challenger League. Top alliances in the normal Alliance of Conquest can participate. Ah, top alliances. See, this is a problem right here. Just seeing that right there is a problem for me because again, it caters to the players who've been playing for a long time. Top alliances in normal Alliance Conquest can participate. Well, so if you're not playing, so what that means is you're gonna have to play Alliance Conquest to try to get to a, a top alliance and then try to participate. Well, if that's the case and there's no changes to the original Alliance Conquest, you're not going to want to play that game mode. The game mode takes way too damn long. It's all autoplay. It's all RNG based. Most people aren't going to play it, including myself. I will not play it. Uh, my alliance definitely is not into the Alliance Conquest world. 
And I think a, a lot of alliances really aren't because it's just a dull game mode. And if the normal Alliance Conquest remains the same, well, then it's just going to be the same old, same old alliances in the top being able to participate. So it doesn't really help anybody but a niche crowd of players. Agents can utilize the Operation Area and Character Requirement Bonus to advantageously conquer and top Alliance Conquest. We also recommend cooperating with the other Alliance members as the Alliance Conquest contribution rewards have also been improved. And then we see this nice map. I think the map's pretty cool. Honestly, top alliance of certain ranks can participate in a Challenger League set in New York. I like it. The Im image above is currently under development and may differ from what appears in the update. Cool. Though the top alliance conquest process may be similar to the normal alliance conquest, new strategic factors have been added through the operation area and bonus requirements. Again, if people still have to, you know, they're going to play the normal alliance, and if it, if it remains the same, well, the game mode just isn't going to get played. Operation area. The new operation area system has been added in the top league. Dispatch can only proceed with the once neighboring areas are conquered. Although powerful buffs are applied to the entire alliance based on the number of dispatched heroes, please note that heroes dispatched to the operation area cannot be used in battles. Carefully planning which heroes will be used to conquer normal heroes and which to dispatch will help with achieving victories much more smoothly. Okay. Character requirement bonus for each area. Character requirements are randomly applied in each area, and the heroes that meet each requirement can receive buffs in battles. Please utilize the useful buffs as much as possible by sending heroes that meet the character requirements. And again, you know, guys, I'm just reading all of this, and I'm just thinking to myself, yeah, but I mean, if, if normal alliance isn't changed, well, we're not even going to play, so none of this really even matters. Alliance conquest contribution reward improvement. As many more heroes required in the Challenger League due to the addition of the Operation Area and bonus requirements, we are planning for more rewards to be obtainable. And they'll do our best to improve the required number of heroes in Alliance Conquest and the rewards that are small compared to their time spent. Exactly. This damn game mode takes forever, which is why a lot of people don't play it. People under time restrictions like myself. Honestly, guys, when you're playing this two hours a day, it's just, oh my God, it's just... And it's just stressful watching characters that you've invested in and built up to lose. It's stressful when they should win. They should win. A lot of times, the characters that you build, you're thinking, man, they should have won or they should have done better than what they did, and they didn't. And it's very discouraging, and you just don't want to play the damn gold uh, game mode. Plus, the rewards are shite, so who cares about it, right? And then lastly, in order to easily acquire Alliance Conquest rewards, the rewards will be given when entering the main lobby after a season ends. Uh, please share any inconveniences with us. I'm pretty sure we will. We've been sharing them for months now, and a lot of them you haven't listened to, to be perfectly honest. And then, you know, although they give us a nice little apology for taking so long, they say there's a lot of variables whenever the, you know, when it's PvP versus PvE, and that's fine. Okay, thank you. You know, I guess better late than never as far as your apology. And then this is what really, this is, this is a nice little touch right here, and I'm being sarcastic when I say this. Um, first, many agents re re reaching the maximum score in squad battle, which is 10 million, and alliance battle, which is 7 million, is a problem that needs to be solved as soon as possible, aside from the PvP content and improvements mentioned above. It will be fixed through the February update, so we already know what they're going to do. They're just going to increase the cap because they've already done it twice in ABX already. They're just going to increase the cap, and lo and behold, you know, they give us the card crafting system, they give us the uh reforging ctps and now the scores are just freaking skyrocketing because players have done that i mean hell they just crafted cards where you can just use your regular mythic cards not p cards which by the way i do want to make a separate video about that and talk about crafting cards because of that because of the crafting cards because of of course just op characters coming into the game because of power creep that's just the nature of games you know we just get more powerful characters as we play they just keep increasing the the damn cap it's just increased cap. So a lot of the players that were able to cap out in ABX in 7 million, guess what? And you were barely getting a 7 million, you're not going to be able to do it anymore. I mean, this is always their quick fix, so it's just lazy changes. I don't know if they're going to do that for sure, but I'm pretty well betting that is what they're going to do. And then it says also hero growth difficulty and other guides are to be improved gradually so that new agents can adapt more quickly to the game and experience various content, which sounds good. Please share your opinions with us so overall to me this is just very vague there's a lot of things we're leaving out they're not telling us the kind of rewards we're going to get they're not telling us what we can use these tokens for 
uh, it doesn't seem like there's going to be any changes to the regular Alliance Conquest, which means that people just aren't going to play it. That's just the true fact of it. So it's kind of like, who cares? And as far as timeline with the extra penetration and buffs, again, if the buffs are not significant enough, nothing's going to change. We're still going to be using the OP characters in timeline. I mean, I welcome any changes, and if they're for the better, all good. But until we really know what is all actually coming, it's hard to actually know how to feel about this. You know, personally, as a PvE player, I'm not really that excited about it. I mean, I'm hoping for the best, but I'm not really that excited about it, to be perfectly honest, guys. But what I am excited about is this. Now, some people are not, but this, to me, I'm very happy about because it's the right time. So, sneak peek one. Greetings, agents. This is Seeing Fragment of Marvel Future Fight. There has been suspicious information about the whereabouts of Deadpool, the most unpredictable mercenary hero. It seems like countless numbers of Deadpools are throwing a party at a secret hideout, including one never seen. We better check this out. And we'll have to watch this on YouTube because for some goofy reason on my emulator, I just can't watch this. So let's check that out. Oh, yeah. Look at this, guys. Look at this. You got Gwenpool, you got the uniforms for Deadpool in there. That is dope. Happy birthday. This is pretty cool and very fitting, as I said earlier, because Deadpool came out in February of 1991. That was the first time he appeared in Marvel Comics, and this is the 30th anniversary for him. And I'm extremely excited to see what they're going to do with Deadpool. Let's jump back into the game. So you can bet that they're going to make Deadpool absolutely insane for this guy right here. No, because currently right now in the game, Deadpool is an amazing character because of the all defense down, which isn't applicable against this guy. And since this is the end game content, this is where most players are putting all their resources. They're trying to fight Null so they can get those extra CCF every single day. And currently right now, even with the holiday Deadpool uniform, which is OP in all these other game modes, except for maybe Thanos here, just OP in all these, they're probably going to make him freaking OP again. Because Deadpool has always been, ever since the very beginning, he's been a complete staple for power creep in this game. You know, when he first came in with his base kit, crazy power creep because the all defense down, you know, he ended up getting another uniform and then he got this damn thing and this thing just, just went crazy, right? Just insane, but it isn't very good against Null. So what are they probably going to do for this guy? I'm almost betting. I'm almost betting. I'm almost betting. Let's go to Universal here. I'm almost betting. Now, I could be wrong, but they might do some crap where they give him increased additional pierce damage because that is the new all defense down. In fact, it's better than all defense down. We've all seen it with Null. We've all seen how strong he is, and it wouldn't surprise me one bit if they done something like that for Deadpool, it wouldn't surprise me even in the least. And I would personally welcome it. Now, some people are kind of upset because they feel like Deadpool is already overpowered, which he is. And they think other characters deserve to get upgrades. And I would agree with that. But it's the 30th anniversary. You know, he came out in February of 1991. So I think this is fitting. I think this is a very fitting update for this character because it's the right time. And you guys saw Gwenpool in there as well. She might be getting, she probably, I almost, guys, I'm almost betting she's gonna get an awakened skill. You watch. I bet this girl gets an awakened skill. I almost bet that he'll get pierce damage because he's always been a PVE god. He's, he's not bad at PVP, he's actually fairly decent, but he's always been a PVE god. And I bet you anything, well, I guess this is JC right now, but I bet you they're probably gonna give him pierce damage and just put him over the top. You do some crap where he throws some bombs and applies Pierce, and he just does insane damage. We'll see, because if they don't give him Pierce, they're just gonna have to give him some serious, lots of hits, lots of attack buffs, so he can do insane amount of damage. Because if, if Deadpool isn't good for Null, then a lot of people just, I mean, they're gonna buy him anyways because of the popularity of the character, but they're gonna be disappointed because if he can't do Null, then it's like, okay, whatever. It's okay, like whatever, for the people that already have the holiday uniform. Now, if you don't have the holiday uniform and they give it, you know, they're going to give them a new uniform, it's freaking OP, you're going to be super happy because you don't have this damn thing. So it really depends on how you're looking at things as far as 
how you feel about it. I'm actually very, very excited for Deadpool and for Gwenpool because I bet you anything, she's going to get a little something, probably get an awakened skill. We'll have to wait to the next sneak peek to really see what's going on. But this is really awesome in my opinion. Uh, as far as the developer note, I've already told you guys how I feel about it. I'm kind of on the outs on it. I really don't know what I think about it. Uh, it seems like it's just catering to uh, the older players, the veterans, uh, the top, the, the players in the top alliances. And I don't really care for that. And it also just seems like we're just not going to... It also just seems like Alliance Conquest is going to be in the same place it's always been. Uh, it's going to be a game mode where a lot of people are not going to play it. But we'll see. I have no idea until we actually get the update. So let me know how y'all feeling about the developer note and how you're feeling about uh, the potential for Gwynpool and Deadpool as to what they're going to be getting in the next update. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Y'all take care and have a good one.